14th Valentine's Day meeting of the St. Leadville Historic Preservation Commission to order. And do we have a roll call? Sure. Commissioner Edwards. Commissioner Lindquist. Here. Commissioner Stillman. Here. Commissioner Whittington. Here. Alternate Bailey. Here. Alternate Flatterker. Here. And Chair Martinick. Here. Okay, good. We're sort of all here, one way or another, <laughs> with the exception of Joey. Um, I don't see any members of the public, but is anybody online or anywhere else that has a comment on an item not on their agenda? You have to move the agenda in a minute. So mm -hmm. You jumped ahead. Okay. I'm, you know. <laughs> go, go back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she does want this to end early. Okay, today. here's the agenda. <laughs> Do I have an <laughs> approval of the agenda, a uh, motion for approval, or does somebody want to add something to it? I motion we approve the agenda. Second? No. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes from the last meeting on January 24th. There is one correction that needs to be made um, in the in a down near maybe two thirds of the way through it cut off the last part of my name that's not cool so it's on i don't know about about eight lines up from the bottom in the a Eight lines up from the bottom on the second page. Yeah. yeah the same line that has 15,000 in parentheses. Oh, yeah, it's on the right hand side. Oh, Wait. thank you. Okay. I did not find it. Then just got winning sense. Sorry about that. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. And the other in page one. The other page one. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. Was that all you saw? That's all I got. Well, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes as, as amended? I'll move that we approve the minutes as amended. Second. I will second that. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No? No. Okay. Uh, public comment items not on the agenda. Well, we went through that already and nobody <laughs> jumped up. So uh, housekeeping items. Okay, this is what I want to hear about. The update on the city council, January 24th. Work session. Did Joey go to that meeting? Joey did. Joey is absent today. So. And um, so we will let planning director the chance take that update. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of updates on that. So, so I think that so three weeks ago, on the 24th, we held a work session with city council. I think that was really successful. We had two additional members of city council come this time. Uh, so we had a total of four um, uh, council members there, including the mayor. Um, so, in general, I think we now have majority support for the proposed amendments. Uh, we did receive some public comment. Uh, we through we listened to the Zoom recording to make sure I got this dialed down. So, I'd like to just just quickly just kind of go through those uh, specific comments. And so, I, I think basically where we're at is these would require some some revisions that staff can work with with the city attorney, and we can uh, bring those back through as we go through the public hearing process in first. First and second, uh, second reading process with city council. Could you tell us who was there from the council? Sure. So we had uh, um, council member Luna Leal, um, council member Hill, the mayor, and council member Green at this last. Um, <laughs> okay. And, and previously we had attendance from um, council member Fergensi and council member Hill mm -hmm. at the previous work site. All right. So the uh, there was. Uh, I guess three, you know, commissioners who commented on this. Like the mayor didn't really provide any additional comments. Um, Councilmember Luna Leal essentially said that he has no concerns with what is proposed. Um, he would like to see, and this is really outside of this proposed amendment package. He would like to see um, the city come up with some way to provide financial help uh, for maintenance for the, these structures. 
Uh, and, and that's where we kind of explain the, the CLG grant opportunities and how we can kind of be clearing house. Would that be a it's a, it's, little man? Right. It's a different, it's right. from the National Park Service, not the CLG grant, but mm -hmm. there is a grant where we could be, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. As, as a CLG, we can't right. be a grant to kind of pass through. Right. Cool. Um, and so uh, he, and he kind of supported um, Council, Council Member Green's comment was uh, clarification on partial demo or additions, whether something would be classified as a, as a partial demolition or a modification to a structure or if it was an addition. And so I think there is some opportunity in the code for us with the proposed amendments for us to go in and clarify that. Um, they, they, I think that was a uh, pretty important event. Um, but generally, Council Member Green said uh, the, what we have in the code right now about that for demolition, they must go through like a, a good faith effort to try and sell the property. Um, I guess quote her that it was ridiculous and offensive. And and I honestly, I, I don't really think that, that that code section is something that I want to like follow my sword on. If we were to remove that, that uh, requirement for the applicant to go through a good faith effort to sell, that's not something that I feel strongly about keeping in the, in the proposed amendments. Hmm. Um, I, I'm welcome to we can discuss this freely or I can keep going however we want to do this. Uh, let's see, regarding um, Councilman Green's comments, just clarification that um, she, you know, she'd like to see some kind of allowance for partial demolition that do not affect um, the primary facade or the primary frontage. Uh, she mentioned she just wants prior prioritize homeowners. I think that was in just regards to like local homeowners versus second homeowners. Um, she has she thinks that there are just some concerns that have not yet been realized. So I, I think that was in the context of a lot of these proposed amendments are trying to address things that could potentially be coming down the line. But her comment was see these things haven't happened yet, even with the examples that I gave in the memo. So I think she's kind of getting to like, are we um, trying to address things that haven't yet happened? That was that was that comment. Let's see, uh, and then there was a comment regarding um, she supports having a code that that really clarifies, you know, what sh what can or not cannot happen in terms of these partial demolitions and additions, and so that is very objective and not subjective to um, the HPC. And then the mayor reminded uh, then that you know, the council will be ultimate decision making body and HPC just making a recommendation. And I think that wraps up Council Member Green's comments. Uh, council Member Hill uh, basically said that he, he believes that we have uh, something ready that's you know uh, it's far enough along to go to P and Z and to city council for first reading. You know, there can be any further minor amendments, even technical amendments made at that time. So that's my update on that work session. I also wanted to kind of talk about next steps. Does anybody have any questions on the on the work session? So you felt it was pretty positive, just yes. thinking. Yeah. yeah. Even with the comments um, and the questions, say from Councilmember Green, mm -hmm. it was very productive. It was very good questions, not just a you know a complaint or something, mm -hmm. and then was answered pretty much pretty much most of them to her satisfaction, meaning that she was not so no, no, no more. I, I think I think it was very productive in all the questions, even with Luna Leal, the questions and then the answers, they seemed pretty happy overall with the answers. So it didn't create more tension or more, I guess, Argument. Mm -hmm. So I, even even with Councilmember Green, I I could see things changing in her mind and and seeing different sides. And, and their main concern is the homeowners. But you know, as a commission, we've all talked about that. We don't. We're not trying to price people out of fixing up their homes. And it would be nice if we held some of the funds that we could have people apply for grants or something. But to help them. But our main concern is getting people to come to us. With this stuff, mm -hmm. instead of not wanting to come to us, so I, I thought it was a very productive. Good. And I think going forward with Jacob's ideas that he can address here in a second, as long as we don't have any questions, um, it will help to further our 
what we're trying to do. Kurt, did you have any questions? No, it sounds good to me. Okay. Did you, did, hey, Lori, did, did Joey have any input or was he just kind of a observer? No, he had some very good input. He did have very good input, actually, yes. Good. Okay, great. Good job. And now we'll go on to the next steps that Chapin wants to talk about. So I, I think how we kind of last where we last left us was kind of this with council at the work session three weeks ago was that we would proceed to planning zoning commission, which is required by the code, and then to the, the first and second reading of city council. Since then, I have been thinking about this a little bit more, and I would like to perhaps take a, a different approach. And I, I talked with the mayor about this and, and, uh, and the city manager, they were both, they both thought this was a good idea. I think Lori is supportive of this as well. Um, the, the six month demolition loop, loophole is the, the time sensitive issue. We have a moratorium in place until November. And in theory, you don't want to allow your, let your moratorium go all the way or be extended. And so what, I would, what I'm proposing to do is to separate out these code amendments, as I believe the commission had originally intended for when this one go to council, but now that we have the majority support of the, of the council, separate out the six month demolition loophole ordinance, the, the ordinance that, that affects, that corrects that, and to take that through immediately through planning zoning commission and, and city council on kind of a fast track schedule. But I would like to separate that out from the other uh, code amendments regarding expanding the applicability, because I do think that that deserves, just given the, the potential impact of that, I do think that deserves some additional public engagement. So, for example, you know, two open houses a, a month separate from each other. And while I, so that is not as time sensitive as, as the demolition issue. And I, and I, I think in those, the message that um, there's the opportunity in, a, in that public engagement, those public engagement sessions to really clarify kind of everything that was, you know, shown in the memo and in the amendments and boil this down to what, what the HBC is, is trying to do and what the HBC is not trying to do. So in other words, these proposed amendments would re require uh, some kind of checkpoint for you know, developers or coming into town and want to spend a bunch of money in, um, uh, modifying structure and you know that which could potentially result in something that is not compatible and that the HPC needs to review. So that is something that you know we're trying to do. What we're not trying to do is create an over, overly you know unreasonably cumbersome process for if um, you know homeowners or living and working here in town and they own their home and they want to do a re-roof with a different material or they want to upgrade their windows or they want to change out their door. Uh, requiring, requiring an overly cumbersome process for them to go through. We want to have something that's very simple. There's a form to fill out at City Hall or online to email that over, and you know it's it's essentially an over the counter review. And so we just want to really clarify that so that there's not any kind of um, 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 message out there to, to something else like uh, that could potentially negatively affect the success. Of these proposed amendments when they go to the public hearing process, they get published in the paper. And if at that point we start getting public opposition for perhaps members that once they understand what we're proposing, they're 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 not opposed, but when they just hear, oh, we're, they're, we're trying to in introduce all these requirements, that, that they come to the, the public hearings and not be informed. We want to inform them ahead of time. So I'm recommending that we separate that out, take that through a um, probably you know, probably two open houses that we publicly notice in the paper and everything um, to invite public engagement on that. So the public meetings would be about the demolition portion? No. The other portion. Okay. The expanding the affordability. So I couldn't see people turning out for two public meetings on demolition. No. You know, that, okay, well, that makes sense. Just trying to get that demo part through mm -hmm. quicker and then kind of relaxing a bit to hold some public meetings for the other items that we want to change mm -hmm. so that we can get the public behind us. So as soon as you know it, if they understand what we're trying to do, I think we'll have their support. I mean, basically knowing what we're not trying to do is just as important to them 
as what we are trying well, to do. Well, as you said, that's kind of what we wanted to do in the first right. place. We were, so, we yeah, were, yeah, exactly what we wanted to do. As long as we wanted to do it in the first place, was, that was so much more important than just mm -hmm. the poll. The rest of it is more of a talking to everybody seeing it doesn't make sense for us to only have jurisdiction over retail core. We could lose the entire district on the outside and the retail core could look fantastic and it won't matter, we would still lose the designation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's real important to engage the community to, to understand what we're trying to do so they'll be more supportive. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think about what you even just said? Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Great. I can explain what that would look like in terms of the schedule. I just just take an initial initial and drafting a schedule. So next week at City Council, I'm I'm intending to to update the City Council on this on how we're going to separate separate these out. And so I'm actually going to give a presentation to City Council on that next week. So in terms of the six month demolition of people ordinance. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I can go to plan as a commission on March 22nd, and then we can do a first reading in city council in, uh, in April and a second reading at city council in May. And, the, and as I mentioned earlier, the, the moratorium is effective until November. Um, so that would be, because once that is effective in, I think it would be late, late May, then we can lift, lift the moratorium. Okay. Mm -hmm. In terms of the the other the other code amendment, the other ordinance for expanding the applicability, that would essentially that would give that same update um, next week at council. We would try to we shoot for open houses at the end of March, early April, um, for the first open house, and I'd like to do another open house that's a, a month later for anyone who might have missed the first one. Um, or just want to come again. So that hopefully that would be the end of April or, or early May. And then we could go to planning and zoning commission uh, at the end of May, uh, city council for first reading in June, city council for second reading in July, and then uh, be effective towards the end of July. Wow. Any question? No. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry guys. I'm my the sun's like right in this awful spot in the camera. Anyway, I just wanted to um, make a comment about uh, Main Street's um, support of this effort. Um, you know, the as we know, and I'm saying the obvious, but the the immense resources, and that's the way I'm pitching it and marketing it. And there are so many other businesses that are, you know, not in the exact retail core. So um, I'm in. Um, you know, as far as the, our program is concerned, you know, whatever we can do to help with open houses or help with communications, um, I'd love to get an updated article in the newsletter. Um, we've tried to start integrating, you know, the importance of having an HPC um, to the business community. So anyways, that was my feedback. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Great, thanks. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll present this to council next week and we'll, uh, I'm assuming we'll have approval for that and we'll you know, lay out a schedule. Okay, great. So we're moving right along, which is good. Okay, anything else about that meeting with the council? Did were you did you were you impressed with it, Greg? I, I, I was no. a little bit surprised actually because uh, some of the objections we had heard dissipated. Mm -hmm. and people that were, were just fine and so pleasantly smart mm -hmm. good okay moving right on to uh grant applications which we have several <laughs> <laughs> the what, guys have been busy thank you who wants to talk about the grant applications Scott, you want to take it? <laughs> uh, sure, I can uh, start off. So we, um, we've prepared drafts of the three sort of smaller local um, grants applications that we've talked about, the Leadville uh, Trail 100 Legacy Foundation, um, Climax, and the Lake County Community Fund or Foundation. 
I always forget what the F is. Um, and it's it's basically adapted from the CLG grant that you all have already seen. A lot of the language is the same, um, just kind of adapted to some of the more specific questions depending on the each, because each application has sort of its own questions that it asks. Sometimes they split up topics in different ways. Um, with then a couple of additions, um, most notably, uh, I took some language from the Leadville 2015 comprehensive plan that was in Chapin's presentation, basically talking about how important the city in 2015 at least said that it thought um, historic preservation was for the economic vitality of the city. Um, and then Steve found some good data from the Colorado Tourism Office from an annual report in 2021 talking specifically about numbers of jobs and economic impact of tourism in Lake County. And then some from some presentations at Saving Places about sort of the value of heritage tourism mm -hmm. in particular. Heritage tourists tend to spend more money than tourists. Um, and that is, is good for from an economic perspective. Um, and so Steve had some nice language that he was able to add about the need for Lake County and Leadville to increase tourism and heritage tourism in particular over the next 15 years or so to replace um, the, the economic contribution that Climax uh, makes to the community um, since it's currently scheduled to, to sort of phase out of operations uh, in the second half of the 2030s. Um, and so we were able to use all that to, to try to make a strong argument about the economic need um, for our work. And then also add in a little piece about how we think that these surveys will promote um, kind of civic vitality, um, a sense of community, a sense of shared project in preserving um, the community and its heritage. Um, and then there's also a new evaluation piece. Um, so we kind of, Steve did this part because I don't know anything about evaluation. Um, so putting it down, you know, what are our goals? We wanna see like over the next decade, a 10% increase in things like certificates of appropriateness for um, historic renovation work, restoration work. Um, a corresponding increase in the number of people who are employed in contracting work related to historic res restoration, a decrease in applications for demolitions, um, things like that. Um, Steve might have, have more to add, but at this point we still have, have a month or so until most of these are due. Um, I, cause I think they're in sort of mid to late March. And so we're really mostly interested in seeing what, if any, uh, ideas for improvement, modification, et cetera, uh, that, that you all might have from what we have here. Um, Steve, do you have anything to add? The, yeah, the description that, um, Scott took from the CLG grant was really complete and and great, and I had very little to say about that. I added a word here or there. Um, but I know with these granting agencies, they want to see, they like they like uh, arguments that this is really important. They like, they like up-to-date data that shows that we aren't just talking about this and saying it to convince them, but that, that somebody else has said something. And so, you know, the, see the Colorado Tourism Office have, puts um, annual reports on, they're always a, a year behind, but luckily 2021 was a good year compared to 2020. And so the figures aren't as good as 2019, but they're still pretty good. And so there were, there were hard numbers there that specifically were related to Lake County that we could integrate 
And then there were some good statements at the Saving Places conference. And so um, we were able to get some, you know, some uh, testimonies that are last week in there too. And so that was, I think that will work in our favor. Um, as far as evaluation, I know that uh, some of these places really want to see, you know, wh whether we can live up to them may not, may not matter as much as that we say we're going to try to achieve mm -hmm. certain things. So that's why I said over 10 years, um, we'll have, see growth in a number of areas of 10%. Um, that may not be reasonable, or we may be able to do better than that. It's impossible to tell, but a, a lot of times they want to see some kind of figure like that so that they know you really thought this through. Great. How many of these ask for a follow up, you know, in a year to actually ask us? I know that some that I read originally <laughs> had that in there. Do any yeah, of like these they, three? We'll all have. All of these will re all of these that we get will require a report in a mm -hmm. year. Assuming that we get the money. <laughs> right. Yeah. If if we get it. Mm -hmm. So if we say we're going to do something like, well, if we say that in 10 years we're going to have certain growth, there's no way we can mm -hmm. evaluate that in a year. But um, we can also look at changes that happen over the course of the next year to see if we're at least moving in the right direction. Or we can just say, well, it's too early to tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, but um, we, you know, we just have to be honest in our reporting if we get the grants. Or would you like us to spend some time? I mean, I, we just got these, you know, shortly before the meeting today. We, yes, I did email them out to everyone because I just got them yesterday. So uh, I we do have, I'm just going to throw this out there, we do have on our agenda for the 28th of February finalize the grant. So oh, okay. I guess my question to Scott and Steve would be, what do you need from the commission to help us get to that point where we can sit down next, next meeting and, and get it finalized? Well, I'd say review everybody yes. read them over and mm -hmm. if you see where we have a typo or if you see something that you think could be beefed up or if you know something that we didn't think of that's great mm -hmm. let us know um because there will still be time to make the modifications and get these in mm -hmm. so that's <clears throat> where though the next meeting and okay we can do that i think mm -hmm. <laughs> i hope <laughs> Yeah, so. and you'll be reading basically the same thing three times. Oh, that's I mean, <laughs> with, with, with some, with some <laughs> tweaks. Yeah, with, with some tweaks. Mm -hmm. So, um, because, for instance, the like um, the Legacy Foundation isn't didn't seem as strict on evaluation as the other mm -hmm. ones did. So that section is a lot a lot uh, fuzzier mm -hmm. in that proposal. And I think each of these grants has its own little, like is a climax the one who wants to know about economic development and how this is going to help them. And the legacy grant is more about the historic, you know, nature of Leadville. They're more interested in the history part of it. So mm -hmm. I think each of them kind of have their own. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? No, yeah, yes and no. They, okay. But every, every one of them had an economic thing that you could focus on. Mm -hmm. um, Legacy didn't even ask what, which area you were promoting with your project. And so one, one thing I suggested we add to that proposal was specifically this supports your mission statement. And I repeated the mission statement. And also um, this supports your these three core values that you have mm -hmm. so that they... It's right, you know, right in their face. Perfect. Thank you. Maybe next year they'll change their application. Oh. <laughs> no, they've, they've had to deal with me before. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you both for, for doing that. And I, I, I did look at the bottom line. I saw each one is about $10,000. So if we were lucky and got all of them, <clears throat> that'd be 30, that'd be a good amount. Yeah, um, I decided uh, since a lot of them have. I mean, some of them only give typically 5,000 or less 
but I decided just to go with 10,000 because it was a, a nice even-ish number. Um, and, you know, if we got all of them, that would basically add up to what we need for matching for the big SHF grant. Um, and if we got all of them, but didn't get that big SHF grant, they would still pay for another neighborhood's worth of survey or something. Um, and then we can always apply for some of the others we talked about, like Summit and El Pomar, if we need some mm -hmm. additional monies in the future. So right now we don't have plans to do further smaller grant applications. We'll be doing the, the State Historic Fund one, which I think is due in October. That's what we're aiming for. Yeah, I think that's the, the plan. We'll just wait for that October one. And we'll also see about getting this CLG in March. And then we can sort of discuss again what we want to do in terms of other grants going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, it, it's unlikely that we'll get even half of what we asked for from any of these places. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. That's just the, the way it works. But it'll all add up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever we can get. Pumpo will get something because <laughs> these are good grant applications, I think. Yeah, and I tried to put in each one, you know, that because they ask about like, what would you do with partial funding? And so I tried to stress that, you know, these are all the goal is both to pay for stuff, but also to leverage whatever we get for even more money from from state sources and other sources um, so that hopefully they won't see what our ask is and shy away from it, but we'll just give even a thousand or two thousand dollars would go towards something. Right, right, good, okay. Okay, so then we will all, if we have anything to get back to you with before the 28th of February, probably well before, it would be better than the day before. Yes. Very much so. And if I could just add that um, for next week's or next meeting on the 28th, I will be putting the packet together for your review on the 24th. So if you have any updates to any of the grants, it would be nice if you could get them to Stephen Scott that week. Yeah. Okay. okay. We send them to Lori or to Scott, or where would we send them? Um, I you could send them directly to uh, to me or to Steve or both of us, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, and then, yeah, we can we can make the the changes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she just reminded me that on that um, state historical fund grant, we need to make sure that we get that a draft because you know they could get feedback to us mm -hmm. if we get that draft to them before the actual deadline. So as long as we're planning the October deadline instead of the April deadline, we have plenty of time. We just need to pay attention. We don't want to wait till October 3rd and then not have given them mm -hmm. a rough draft, you know, our first draft that they could give us some feedback on. Is that what I'm yeah, she said in her email, she said, we recommend that you submit a draft early for review to give you the best chance for success. So we want to make sure we include that prior to our deadline so that we can get some feedback from the state. Okay, good. The annual work plan. Okay, uh, can I just jump in here real quick? Because I have thought, <laughs> which is so scary. Um, Nancy was kind enough, thank you, Nancy, to send me some Main Street um, annual work plans and mm -hmm. things like that. So I really appreciate that. It gave me a better understanding of how to put it together. Mm -hmm. So what I thought the best thing for us to do was, let's do a 2023 goal setting. And then I can incorporate what goals we're trying to accomplish this year into that work plan. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's hard 
to just do a one year when everything we're looking at that we've been discussing the last month or two, even longer, is more of a five year plan. So I think if we try to make ourselves think, and we can have these maybe even by next, the next meeting, if we can try to write down some of our goals that we want to accomplish in 2023, it will help us guide that work plan. So that was my thought, instead of us just kind of dragging it out and having it on every agenda, mm -hmm. if we could just maybe get together a solid three to five goals that we want for 2023, then I can incorporate that into an actual work plan that can go on, kind of as Joey said, we can still tweak it as the months go by and have a good solid one for the next year. But I think if we could incorporate any goals we might have for this year, it would help us stay on track. If, and any, I'm also open to any other ideas of how you want to formulate that work plan. Or we can revisit it every January, February, you know, and try to keep it going throughout. So that's okay. just a thought I had was I could go off of old. So do you want goals just for 2023 or can we throw in a few that might you can absolutely. I think you should throw in a few that are a little more five year ranges, mm -hmm. three to five year range ish, but also some ones that you would really like to take care of this year. And we can, if you can have those to me, you know, in time for that next packet, we can certainly sit around and discuss them, see which ones everyone agrees on, see which ones might not be a priority right now, and, and divvy those up into maybe 2023 and then future. And I think that will help us get that work plan that the states want us to try to work on. Okay, so you want those say by the 24th? Generally? Yes, please. Okay. If I can have those before the 24th, then at our 28th meeting, we can kind of solidify that and have an actual, what everybody agrees on. Mm -hmm. If that's a, okay <clears throat> for you guys, I'm going to do that. Mayor, when, when do requests have to go into uh, for the 2024 budget? Uh, by probably the first of October. We should try. It can't be later than that. We don't finalize the budget until December, but better to get your requests in early in that process. We should probably figure out how to get in the future this whole, you know, the work plan and our goals for the following year in place in September. So that then we, if we think we're going to need money from city council, uh, we'll have that ready for a budget request. That's a brilliant idea. Are you guys still at 4,000 for 2023 right now? 5,000? Okay. Right. Yeah. I think 5,000. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. That's a great idea. And then if we stayed on that schedule every year, we would be right before budget talks. And I think mm -hmm. that's a great idea. And of course, it all depends on how these grants work out, too. Absolutely. Yeah. But we can hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we have not talked about? I know we have, um, I was going to say, we've got Steve's right there is your right oh, out yeah. of the. Um, um, I didn't email this out to anybody, but here in the council chambers, I printed copies of Steve, uh, Steve's. Summary, he went his class of Mercedes places. He's already drawn up a, a summary. So I just told it. I don't have it right. It's just my notes. Mm -hmm. notes from yeah, but, yeah, one thing I wanted to make sure everybody saw though is that there is a new grant program that they announced at the beginning of the keynote called the Paul Broom Historic Revitalization Grants Program. It's available through Colorado Preservation Inc. Right. And I think they got, I think they, I think they have four hundred fifty thousand dollars to distribute. So it's a regrant program, I believe. And I had that in your packet. I want to say two meetings ago, I had a little flyer from the state that they had sent me on on that Paul Brun revitalization revitalization grant. So I, I think that I can't remember if that's the one that has. The main street or something, I don't know. I, I, I'll have to look that up again, but it, it was just coming out and it hadn't gone live or anything. Yet. So 
We will get more information on that. I'll get you back for the next meeting. There, I thought there were some good ideas in the infill design review roundtable. Um, it may be a little late to integrate some of those into our proposed changes, but uh, it might be something to think about for the future. For instance, uh, I think is it I think Fort Collins. No, no, Crested Butte. They won't. They won't even consider demolition unless there's a redevelopment plan already in place for that property. And so um, I thought that was an interesting thing that we might want to consider in the future. Maybe not now, but um, so you can't, you wouldn't be able to come before us and ask to demolish a structure unless you knew, unless you were able to say what you were going to do with that property afterward. You're getting ready to show you some ordinance on demolition anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad idea. Might, might be in time. Okay, well, I um, said I would go to three, and I did. <laughs> and then I would write them up, and I will. <laughs> but, and Lori and I seem to have gone to the same ones and kind of have the same idea. That was, like that was one I found really interesting in that. Thank you for putting those together. Hmm? Great. Thank you for putting those yes, together. Thank you. It's my great time being retired is I can just do this. <laughs> yeah. But some of them were interesting and some were had some interesting thoughts about how we could make ourselves more visible in the community, which I thought mm -hmm. something that we need to discuss and do more with. And uh, and some of them were maybe not that interesting, but <laughs> But worth, you know, listening to. Good so I will be have that, but not that interesting. I'll have that to you, hopefully by the twenty fourth. I just okay. couldn't get to it this sure. week sure. The weekend. So anyway. and, and and if you find that you can't get to it, we could always switch and have Steve, who's already written this up. He could be the one that gets, that gets the scholarship. But I think it would be nice to get another person's thoughts, and you know, not everybody on the commission went. So it'll be nice mm -hmm. reference material for those that didn't attend. So I think I think it's a great idea. Okay. And well, we can, if you want to, we can discuss it more at our next meeting. I can put it on the agenda. But there were some things that we probably ought to think about incorporating that we did learn. At this but year. I thought it was interesting. I just I'm gonna take a lot of time. But I thought it was interesting that there was a kind of people felt that that HPC is somehow faced negative. A lot of negativity in their communities, and yes. I don't think we're well known enough to have people not uh, like us. That's what I said. Anybody <laughs> comes from any any body, meaning a board or commission, that wants to regulate mm -hmm. is automatically somebody the community doesn't want to deal with. That's just nature of the beast. And of course, and, we don't regulate. So. Right. And knowing that we have specific things we'd like you to do, and that, you know, just, just make people kind of go. But I think that in the last year, having the people come to us for advice, for direction, is a testament to the mm -hmm. fact that we're not as bad and awful as some might think. So it, it's, it's like you said, we need to get our faces out there. We need to get our, our logo out there. We need to be more mm -hmm. more easily recognizable and not be some entity that nobody can approach. Because mm -hmm. I think that we've already, in the two years we've been together, eased that a lot. Just in being, I, I've never seen people come to us when they weren't required to. And we've had several. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, is a good Sign, but. Okay. We don't care what they say, but so we think you're great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He speaks the truth. <laughs> well, you know, we are great, actually, as a group. <laughs> I, I think. So we want people to recognize that. I just want to ask if there's anything else um, for next the next meeting that you guys wanted on the agenda that, that we haven't discussed. I mean, we'll finalize these grants. And maybe we'll get more information on that call room as well. But I need you guys to help me with what you want me to keep on the agenda, if there's anything else. And maybe someday we'll get another application for a COA. Yeah, maybe we we'll can use that Larry Lucas and Bill uh, Conkowitz are still working on mm -hmm. local designation. So we might have some of those come through designation. So we'll have things. The spring's not that far. 
What I have a uh, second pre application meeting with that that infill that uh, Lori mentioned at the beginning of the meeting on, on this this Friday. And so I can ask that person if, if they're ready for like a pre application review or like a work session with the HPC. Um, and you know, I, I don't know where that like uh, if they were to submit for that, you know, two weeks and you would come, uh, then she would come in front of you within two weeks from now. I don't know if that fits in her schedule mm -hmm. in terms of submitting for a formal COA application. Yeah. But I can ask her if. I can kind of um, kind of uh, feel this out. If, if the design is ready for uh, ready for your review, if, if um, for she submits for a formal application, she just wants to do a work session. That can give the HPC an opportunity to provide some pre-application comments and also fill some space on the agenda, which sure. sound might be a little bit light for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. I would also say that. Uh, pre application meetings are really valuable because once the application's in, they're quasi judicial yep. and you can't discuss them with anymore, right? And so, if you have a problem with their design, you know, then, then they're kind of due, right? So, okay. And this is the one, if you if you can remember back, this is the one that I was talking about with Kati Ross, the, the, the house had been empty with no utility for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's also, and remember, this is the one that I learned so much because. I tried to put the two together, the infill with the demolition. So we got a sneak preview of some of the infill that they were planning on it. And then I had to say, no, we're not supposed to look at the infill. That has to come later. But this is one that's the, the lot that this parcel is on is very high up. And then mm -hmm. the front comes down, and then we're putting that garage yeah. or basement right kind mm -hmm. of into the dirt. So it's mm -hmm. not an easy area to work with so mm -hmm. i think it would be great if we could do a, a pre-application type like the mayor said before it's an official coa and we can't really discuss it mm -hmm. it would be great to give them some input because they were very readily accepting anything we were suggesting at the time so and we want to encourage that yeah we definitely yeah. want to encourage that mm -hmm. so yeah that's a good okay. idea so we can think about that after your meeting yeah. and we'll see how they feel about that so great Okay. Anything else from anybody? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a comment real quick. It's, it's a conversation that Chief and I have, and I think you guys may all know this, is we're asking for uh, an ordinance change on the second ask, mm -hmm. which is to expand uh, right. you know, your, your purview to the mm -hmm. entire uh, National Area District, except we've always acted like we did have that purview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you remember, we sent we sent out a letter, you know, the, about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. The map that showed the entire National Overlay District, and we've done multiple COAs that are not in the retail core. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we've always acted on that basis. So it's not. I think in most people's mind, it's not actually a change, except that it's 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 not reflected in code. Because the HPC has, has purview over the entire district, so it's it's basically fixing something that that, uh, that we thought existed already. So if we bring it up, we might be <laughs> focusing yeah. on things we wish people weren't. Yeah, yeah. I'll be here. Very <laughs> Well, we'll have to find out how it goes. Hey, anything else? Anybody on the screen there? Okay. Yeah, how do you get on the screen? I don't see my picture up here. Well, we want to see. At the bottom of your screen, it'll say video, and you have to, to click on that so you're not. Do you see oh, that? I don't, I don't, well, next time. <laughs> we know it's I see, I, I see stop video. That's all I see. Oh, Nancy's on video too. Yeah. <laughs> It'll all work out. But we do we'll get it figured out. Next, I'll figure it out next time. Okay, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second? I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No? Okay, the. Um,